So this Wegener's we discussed, we'll discuss Wegener's in detail in previous chapter. So in CML, following pathological findings are suggestive of diagnosis. I would feel again this um, question has been tailored in a wrong manner. Okay, anyways, we'll discuss with whatever question available. And CML, what will be the findings of CML? We have uh, three phases of CML, like they have a chronic phase, which is commonly patients will be diagnosed at that stage, followed by accelerated phase, followed by blast crisis. It doesn't mean in every patient, in every case, chronic phase is followed by accelerated phase. So in some patients, patients will suddenly jump from chronic phase to blast crisis. Okay? And uh, the CMS was, CML was uh, spoken very much at least a decade ago, still a decade ago because of the uh, detection of the specific drug. For other tumors and for other malignancies will be chemotherapy for a given for a period of time and they are radiotherapy or surgery then patient will be on follow up. This particular thing it is a imatinib, it is a mesylate which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor that has to be given throughout the life. Till then the patient has to be on such treatment if he is responding well to the treatment, if he is not resistant to the therapy okay, and if he is not developing any complication. Fine. So, in the uh, chronic phase, usually the blast count will be under 10, usually up to 9%, not usually, it has to be only up to 9%. And in accelerated phase, the blast percentage will be from 10 to 19. And in blast crisis, the blast count will be like that of acute leukemia. What is the blast count for acute leukemia? It's 20%. So, uh, here again, blast crisis, the blast percentage will be 20%. So, myelocytes, metamyelocytes, promyelocytes, what are all these? These are the precursors of neutrophils. So, if we write the, uh, the differentiation stages of myeloid cells, it's like starts from committed cell, the myeloid image, the myeloblast, then the promyelocyte, myelocyte, metamyelocyte, the band form or the staph form, and then the polymorphonucleus cells are the neutrophils. That's how they ev it evolves. So, all these are the precursors of the neutrophils. So, you have find more of immature cells in the peripheral smear apart from increase in the cell count. This is what is called a shift to left. So, shift to left is noticed in chronic pineal leukemia and then neutrophilia. Is it a finding in CML? Yes, it is. That is a, I mean, that is a uh, hematological finding that give the clinician a strong suspicion in addition to the clinical finding. There will be increase in the cell count with the majority of them being, most of them being neutrophilic series. And in the neutrophilic series, you find most of them in a mature, mature stage and you do find shift to left. That's the, these are the features of the chronic phases of chronic myeloma leukemia. And basophilia, is it a feature of CML? Of course, yes. Because basophilia, you know, like we have only very few causes of basophilia. The classical, prototypical example for basophilia will be chronic myeloid leukemia, which is prominent in the uh, cr uh, chronic phase. And of course, in accelerated phase, one of the criteria for accelerated phases is basophilia. Okay, like or like uh, uh, other features like a blast count up to 19 percentage from 10 to 19 percentage. Uh, thrombocytopenia, persistent thrombocytopenia, unresponsive. A thrombocytosis, splenomegaly, cytogenetic evolution, and the presence on basophilia, eosinophilia, all these are features of accelerated phase. And when uh, in, in comes to blast crisis, when the patient, uh, when the patient comes to your attention for the first time and the patient is on blast crisis, how are we going to differentiate it from acute myeloid leukemia? I mean, there are very uh, subtle feature differences, especially if the patient is not a known case of CML. One clue for the pathologist to diagnose blast uh, crisis of CML is the presence of basophilia. So, basophilia is a feature of chronic myeloid leukemia. Okay. And then leukocytosis, of course, it is. This is it does not mean that every case of leukemia will have leukocytosis. This is false, especially with respect to acute leukemia, especially with respect to acute lymphoid leukemia. Sometimes you know, like we have something called as a leukemic leukemia, sub leukemic leukemia, where the counts may not be elevated at all. But CML is a general rule that there will be leukocytosis. What is the peripheral blood picture of CML called as? Called as 
mean you find a variety of cells not that is one type of cell you find a variety of cells in the peripheral sphere it's called as like garden party up is like how people come well dressed up in different clothes for a party it's like that that's a garden party appearance for cml in contrast with cll so what will be the appearance of peripheral that picture of cll they are more or less the mature cells mature lymphocytes they all will look more or like the same unless they progress to cll by pl pro lymphocytic leukemia or uh, cll uh, it progresses to even higher categories so otherwise it will have a monotonous appearance then so that case it is called as school prayer appearance where like in a school prayer all the children will be uniformly dressed up like that the uh, peripheral that picture will be uniform so in contrast to the cml chronic face especially so all these are features of cml so feature of primary tuberculosis so primary tuberculosis means it, it has gons complex what do you mean by gons complex it's a triad we have a gons focus this is primary pulmonary focus usually in the mid lung low part of the upper lobe or the upper part of the middle lobe like that so that will be the gons focus with lung consolidation with necrosis caseous necrosis and all and then the adjoining lymph node and the connecting lymphatics so lymphangitis will be there so you have a parenchymal gons focus we have lymphangitis we have lymph adenitis so all these three put together will form the gons complex that's a uh, i mean primary finding in primary pulmonary tuberculosis and will there be pleural effusion yes it can be and will there be fibrosis yes but miniary mottling is usually a feature of primary progressive tuberculosis it's not a finding in primary tuberculosis and and the answer cavity has been given but it is actually wrong because cavity is usually a finding present in secondary pulmonary tuberculosis it's the host reaction to it so host reaction is destroyed so it's not seen in primary pulmonary tuberculosis it's usually a finding of secondary tuberculosis bilateral pulmonary pleural effusion seen in so which condition so it's the question is about exudative pleural effusion so generally the effusions be classified into transudative and exudative generally the non infective conditions the inflammatory conditions the hemorrhagic conditions the malignancy conditions the autoimmune disorders all these are associated with exudative effusions and not to be forgotten is pancreatitis that's why the serum pancreatic amylase measurement is one of the uh, part of assessment protocol in uh, exudative effusion if for any case for that one because to rule out the possibility of pancreatitis at least chronic pancreatitis it's like that so i repeat all the infectious conditions inflammatory conditions hemorrhagic conditions post traumatic conditions uh, malignancies autoimmune disorders of course chronic pan pancreatitis all these are causes of exudative pleural effusions so with this can say with sld will it be uh, will it result in transudative or uh, exudative it's an autoimmune disorder even rheumatoid arthritis will result in exudative pleuritis exudative pleural effusion so this sld will be a cause of exudative pleural effusion what about this lymphoma it's a medical condition when it involves the pleural cavity it's going to result in exudative pleural effusion and congestive cardiac failure nephrotic syndrome or passive condition so they will result in transudates and again this is a very wrong option so i don't feel like discussing about it over here so among the given options the sld and lymphoma are causes of exudative pleural effusions so coagulation defects are associated with i just skip this question it's been very wrongly tailored so i just skip this question 